Hello everyone, here is another video with OrcTube channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about IUPAC naming of cycloalkanes. I'm going to start to explain how we can name cycloalkanes with these two examples. For the first step, we need to identify the parents. To identify parents, we need to count number of carbon in the ring and also in the largest chain. For example, for this compound, we have five carbon in our ring and we have only three carbon in the substituent. So the parent in this compound is the ring. But if we take a look to this compound, here in our chain, we have six carbon and in our ring, we have only four carbon. So the parent in this compound is the chain, not the ring. So when we want to name these two compounds, we name this compound like a cycloalkane. But for naming the second compound, we name it like an alkane. And we mention this ring as a substituent during the naming. First, I'm going to explain how we can name cycloalkane and in the second part of this video, I'm going to explain how do we name this type of molecules as well. The second step in naming is numbering the ring. The number one is always belong to the point of attachment in cycloalkanes. So the number one is belong to this carbon. And for the naming of this compound, I need to write the name of substituent. So this group or branch is isopropyl. Then the name of cycloalkane, cyclopentane. When we have only one group on our ring, we don't write this one most of the time in the naming. Let's see how we can name cycloalkane when we have two or more substituents in our compound. Here is the first example when we have two alkyl group. So we need to number in the ring. Again, number one is one of these point of attachment. Because these two groups are the same and the molecule is symmetry, then it doesn't matter which one I choose. So I put number one here. I can go clockwise to numbering the ring or I can go counterclockwise. Like the naming of alkane, we always would like to have the lowest possible number in our name. If I choose the left one, then the numbers are 1 and 4 or I can say 14 and if I choose the right one the numbers are 1 and 2 or I can say 12 so 12 is lower than 14 then our choice is this method so after numbering the ring then we can write the name of compound on carbon 1 and our carbon 2 we have methyl group so 1 and 2 dimethyl then the name of parent is we have four carbons so cyclobutane here is a second example i can put number one here on this point of attachment then of course counterclockwise is a better option because it's closer to the second group so I'm not going to put 2, 3, 4 because I have 4 here, but in counterclockwise, I have 3. But this is one possibility. The second possibility is to put number 1 on methyl. If I put number 1 on methyl here, then this is number 2 and this is number 3. In both of these, I have 1, 3, and one three. Both of this method, it gives me same number. So in this case, we cannot make decision based on number. We have to make decision based on alphabet. The name of this group is ethyl, and the name of this group is methyl. So we choose number one based on the alphabetical order. So we would like to have number one for ethyl group. Then we don't consider this numbering. And the name of this compound is 1-ethyl-3-1-ethyl-3-1-ethyl-3-1-ethyl-3-1-ethyl-3-1-ethyl-3-1-ethyl-3-1-ethyl-3-1-ethyl-3-1-ethyl-3-1-ethyl-3-1
methyl then we have cyclopentane please keep in mind that we use alphabetical order only if we cannot make decision based on the numbers so our priority is always having the lowest possible number in our name here is the next example this is completely different from the previous example I can put number one here, then two, three, or I can put number one on the point of attachment of ethyl group. Let's see what are their difference. For the left one, we have three branches, then we have three number in our name. So on carbon one, we have two branch. So we have one and one and three when we write the name for this compound and for the second one we have one and three and three well considering these numbers one one three is lower than one three three so in this compound we are not going to use alphabetical order because we can make decision based on number and it is not like the last example so this is not correct but when we want to write the name, of course, we always follow the alphabetical orders. So we have tyriethyl. Then we need to write one and one, dimethyl. Then the name of ring is cyclopentane. In cycloalkane, we also have the cis and trans isomerism. When we have cis and trans isomerism for two group on cycloalkane, we need to write this cis and trans before the beginning of the name. Like in this example, these two groups, they are on the same side, both of them, they are wedge. So these two groups, they are cis. We need to write cis before writing the name of compound. Then we need to number in the ring. And because we have only two groups, we choose the alphabetical order. Then we have one ethyl and then three methyl cyclohexane. For second one, this group is dash and this group is wedge. These two groups are located on two different faces of the ring, so it is a trans isomer. Then we need to write trans. After trans, we need to write the name of compound. So we need to numbering the ring. This is methyl, and this group is isopropyl. So isopropyl has priority because we considering I. And this carbon should be number one because of alphabet. Then we have one isopropyl then three methyl cyclopentane so we use cis and trans at the beginning of the name of cycloalkane in this example we have three point of attachment so one time i need to put number one on this carbon one time I need to put number one on this carbon and one time I need to put it on this carbon. Then I need to evaluate in which condition the molecule has lowest number. Let's see how we can do that. For the first one, I would like to start from here. It really doesn't matter. Going counterclockwise or clockwise, of course, clockwise is better. It's closer to the second group. So I put number two here number three and number four so if i use this method of numbering i have branches on carbon one carbon two and carbon four so i have one to any four if i choose number one for methyl then let's take a look to the second possibility if i choose number one here on the point of attachment for ethyl group then I should go counterclockwise is closer to the second group. Then two, three, four, and five. So the branches are 
located on carbon 1, 2, and 5. So I have 125. So between these two, of course, 124 is lower, and our choice is this one. Let's see what we have for the third possibility. If I choose to put number one here, from this side, the fourth carbon is branched, and from here, the third carbon is branched. So we choose the closer side. Two, three, and four. Using this method on carbon one, carbon three, and carbon four, we have substituents. So the number is 134. So between these three possibility, the lowest number is 124. Then we have to choose these numbers for naming of compound. So these two, we don't consider them anymore. Knowing this, I can write the name of this compound right now. Based on the alphabet, we have isopropyl, we have ethyl, and we have methyl. So first we write ethyl, so two, ethyl after ethyl is isopropyl with i so for isopropyl then we have methyl and the name of ring is cyclohexane here is another example Again, we have the same strategy. We need to put numbers on each point of attachment to see which one is the best and it has lowest numbers. Let's start from here, then put one. Of course, the number two should be here. It's closer from this side comparing to this side. Then number three and number four. So when we have this method of numbering on carbon one, on carbon 2, on carbon 2, and on carbon 4, we have branches. So 1, 2, 2, 4. Let's see the other options for numbering. If I choose to put number 1 here, then number 2 should be here is closer, comparing to here. So number 2, 3, 4, 5, and six then carbon one one two and six they are branched then we have one one two six right now between these two the second one is better because we have the lower numbers comparing to 12 24 and the third one if i put number one here then it's closer to the second branches on this side so we have three four five six and seven then on carbon one three three and four we have substituents one three three four so between these three situation the middle one is the best so we ignore these two and we write the name based on the middle one. The name of this group is S-butyl or sec-butyl. So on carbon-6, we have sec-butyl. On carbon-1 one and 1, we have dimethyl. And on carbon-2, instead of cyclopropane, we say cyclopropyl because it's like an alkyl group and it should end with YL. So it's cyclopropyl. Actually, in this compound, we have two different rings and the parent ring is the one with seven carbon and the smaller one is a substituent. When we want to write the name of this compound, we should know that the C is considering in alphabetical order. So whenever we have cycloalkyl group, cyclopropyl, cyclobutyl, cyclopentyl, we take a look to the C. And here we have M. And for secbutyl, we take a look to B, not to the sec. 
Then the name of this compound starts with secbutyl. And we put secbutyl always inside the parentheses. Then we have six secbutyl. After that, we have two cyclopropyl. Then one and one dimethyl. Then the ring has seven carbon. So cycloheptane. In the second part of this video, I would like to discuss how we should name this compound. In this compound, the parent is the chain because we have six carbon in this chain and we have only five carbon for ring. So we don't name it like a cycloalkane. We name it like an alkane. So this is our parent chain and we should number it from left side because the carbon one starts with a substituent and from right side we don't have any carbon 2 carbon 3 4 5 and 6 the name of these three groups are methyl and the name of this substituent is cyclopentyl right now because it is a substituent it's not a parent so it should be ended with yl cyclopentyl then we have cyclopentyl and methyl c and m so based on the alphabet order we should start to write the name with cyclopentyl then we have one cyclopentyl then on carbon two two and three we have trimethyl then the name of parent chain we have six carbon it's hexane so we name this compound like an alkane not like a cycloalkane and here is the last example this is our parent chain and we need to numbering from right side is closer to the first substituent then on carbon 2 we have methyl so we have two methyl in our name and let's see how we should name this substituent if we didn't have this part, the name of this group was cyclopropyl. So it is a cyclopropyl, but it also has an ethyl group. We can write the name like the IUPAC method. And always the point of attachment to the parent chain is number one when we want to name a substituent. On carbon two, I have ethyl. And then instead of cyclopropane, I should write cyclopropyl because it is a branch, is not a parent in this molecule. So on carbon four, we have this group and on carbon two, we have methyl group. Which one should come first? First, we should write four to ethyl cyclopropyl. Then we have two methyl and the parent chain has six carbon. So hexane. Thank you for watching this video. You may want to subscribe to this channel to watching more video.